Hello, Tanya Laird here, and welcome to part three of lecture 11 of ENGR 231 Engineering Statics. In this portion of the lecture, I just want to do a brief discussion of the difference between local equilibrium and global equilibrium as applied to uh, frames and simple machines, of course. So local versus global equilibrium, this was going to be a perhaps a repeat or a rephrasing of some of the things we've seen in previous uh, uh, videos. But another way of looking at things or another way of conceptualizing things local versus global uh, equilibrium and analysis. Uh, local versus global. And I'm going to apply this in the context of statics. You often see this in very large structural analysis or structural design uh, applications, especially in industry and things like that. Uh, they'll usually refer to global as the major structural system of a building or a structure or something, and the local is like small local attachments, like a, a rack supporting a, a bunch of cable or a pipe support or something like that. Usually you'll see those terms here. But the way I'm going to apply these in statics is basically global equilibrium versus local equilibrium, or um, treating the entire thing as a rigid body versus looking at the individual pieces of a frame. So let's go ahead and apply this in a more um, written out form. Global equilibrium. With global equilibrium, so I'm going to describe a global equilibrium and local equilibrium. So with global equilibrium, we are describing uh, or treating the entire frame as a single object. We treat the entire frame as a single object or a single rigid body. A rigid body. And analyze what kind of external forces are keeping it in place. Basically, these are the two main ways of analyzing a frame, although we'll get to the uh, explicit analysis discussion in part four of this lecture. Um, and analyze, uh, we treat the entire frame as a, or a, uh, the entire frame as a single rigid body, I have a choice to say as a single rigid body, and analyze what forces are needed to hold it in place. Uh, forces slash moments are needed to keep it in equilibrium, I should say or needed to maintain static equilibrium. So if I have a, and I'm going to explain this in, in the context of a relatively simple frame. So let's say I have a simple frame uh, made of three fixed, uh, three members with fixed joints like this. Fixed joints, fixed joints, but then let's say there is a, oh, maybe we can just say there are there is a pin support and a pin support. And there would be some arbitrary forces applied to this. Well, if I was to analyze this as a, uh, in, in terms of global equilibrium, and let's say there are just some arbitrary forces applied to this. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's just draw out some arbitrary forces just in different directions. Maybe even some distributed loads if we wanted. Something like this. Uh, something kind of like this here. Just some arbitrary forces applied in different directions. Um, but we would of course have our uh, reaction forces, but if we want to analyze this as a, if we wanted to look at what kind of forces need, were needed to maintain equilibrium, I might just, I would draw this entire thing not broken up. I would not look at any of the forces actually contained within the members. That is one of the, that is the crucial difference here. When we're doing global equilibrium, we are only looking at forces that are applied external to the frame. Uh, we are not looking at any of the uh, forces that are revealed when we cut the, mem the uh, when we cut the frame up into its individual members. So if I, I might analyze, okay, well that there's that force there, there's that force there, that force there, and that force there, and then whatever kind of arbitrary loadings were applied to this thing at the at the outset. 
So that is global analysis or global equilibrium where we're saying, okay, uh, let's just treat this thing as a single rigid body, just like we have done previously when we look at trusses, uh, where we said, okay, well, uh, let's just say that the, the frame or the truss is one big object, one big dumb object, we'll ignore that it's actually made of members, and we'll just say what uh, kind of forces are needed to keep this entire thing in equilibrium. Local equilibrium is the exact opposite, or local analysis is the exact opposite. Here, you're going to break the object into many pieces. Uh, the frame is separated into its component uh, members. Into its component members. And all of the internal forces are drawn. Internal forces are drawn. Or internal internal forces between members are drawn. Uh, are drawn. And static equilibrium applied to the members individually. Uh, applied to each member individually. So for this frame here, here's how I might do that. I might separate this into three individual members, like so, like so, basically two columns and a beam. And so I'm going to break these apart and show some equivalent forces or some good forces on here, or appropriate forces, not good forces, but so let's say we have A, B, joints A, B, C, and D here. So let's look at what kind of forces would be on this. Well, first I would have my, my reaction forces don't go away, although often we try to calculate them as much as possible uh, using the global analysis if possible. So I would have an AY and AX, a, a DY and a DX. And because these are um, because these are fixed joints, I would have the uh, I would have the uh, two directionals of force being transmitted, two translational directions of force, basically an FX and an FY, and a moment transferred through each of them. Now I would still have the forces applied, and typically how we do this, for example, now for this force, it's easy to see that this is going to be on member BC. Now for this one, it's a bit tricky because as long as now, if you're actually drawing the joints out and applying joint equilibrium and etc., like we talked about in, in the previous section. Uh, you could apply it directly to the joint and draw the joint as its own mini member, basically. But if you're not doing that, then basically assume that the the, call, the member here basically pick one. So don't try to apply this to both the um, to both the beam here and the column. Basically, just pick one. So I would have maybe I just uh, choose to apply it to the top beam. Totally arbitrary, but pick one, and then I would have the distributed load here. And again, we are maybe getting a bit of ahead of ourselves, but I think hopefully this will come together as we move through this lecture. And then the kind of connecting forces we'll have are, uh, this would be joint B, BX, BX, uh, maybe a BY, a BY, downward BY here, uh, downward BY, and then maybe an MB, the moment transferred through B and then the moment transferred through B. Now, don't worry, I know this is get, getting fairly complicated and fairly messy, but uh, again, this is, uh, I tend to, when actually doing mathematical problems or problems with numbers, example problems, we'll draw these out a little bigger. And we don't actually tend to use many fixed joints in uh, engineering statics and in this level, of course, because uh, once you start adding lots of fixed joints, things tend to become statically indeterminate fairly quickly, um, but, it will, but it's really not too bad at the level we're dealing with. The certain levels of not too bad. So then we'll have a CX and a CX and then maybe a CY and an equal and opposite CY applied downward and then an MC and then some sort of MC here. 
again we see that there are uh, on each joint there is a on each joint there's going to be a horizontal force a vertical force and a moment apply, uh, that carries through that again um this is for uh the case of fixed joints now as far as how we would then do local analyses on this once we've drawn where uh, this this should look familiar if you remember from our discussion of trusses we referred to this sort of thing as an exploded view and so we're doing this kind of the same kind of thing with uh with frames or with general frames more complex frames rather than the specific case of trusses and things are just a little more, more a little bit more complex or actually sometimes quite a bit more complex but how you would then do this is that you would analyze this uh, you would do equilibrium for, say, member AB. And on that given member, then you, for that one member, you treat that thing as its own rigid body. So you would do a sum of forces in the x direction, just on member AB. You would do a summation of forces in the y direction, just on member AB. You would do a summation of moments, again, about maybe point A or point B or some other point, but again, just on member AB. So when I work through the equations of equilibrium on member AB, uh, this force here, whatever is being applied in the middle of BC, would not appear on there. Or if I'm working through um, the equilibrium equations for member CD, the reaction force AY and, a, a, and AX would not appear on there. We would only be looking at the forces that are actually applied to the individual members that we are uh, analyzing at, at any given time. So I'd have basically three sets of equilibrium equations for each of these objects, for each of these members. I would have one for member AB, another for member BC, and a third for member CD. And that fundamentally is the difference between global uh, equilibrium and local equil equilibrium. Or I could also uh, uh, title this the difference between global analysis and local analysis. They're basically two forms of equilibrium analysis. So you could call it global, global equilibrium or global analysis and local equilibrium or local analysis. But the whole idea holds true. So uh, the key thing I want you to keep in mind is that as I work through this, I'm going to be using terms, that, and I've already used them a bit here and there, but I want you to appreciate the difference between global and local. Global is in treating the entire frame as a single rigid body, and local is breaking it up into pieces and analyzing equilibrium on each piece as its own individual object. All right, I think that'll do it for this part of the lecture. I just wanted to do a brief explanation of what the terms global and local mean, and uh, see further how we're going to get into analyzing uh, frames at a deeper level. All right, that'll do it for now. Please let me know if you, please let me know if you have any questions. I uh, hope you all found this a little bit uh, illuminating, and I'll see you all soon for part four when we start really getting into the meat of uh, the theory and method of, of analyzing frames and simple machines. All right, that'll do it for now, and as always, thank you.